Microsoft makes eyes at Salesforce, Apple's got a secret port, and the feds have one more way to track you. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 331 for Tuesday, May 5th, 2015. This episode is brought to you by lynda.com, the online learning platform with over 3,000 on-demand video courses to help you strengthen your business, technology, and creative skills. For a free 10-day trial, visit lynda.com slash TN2. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash TN2. Welcome, I am Megan Maroney, and this is the show where you get all the tech news you want and none of it that you don't. Because much like the federal government, we're tracking you, so we know what you want better than you do. Now let's get right to today's news. According to sources at Bloomberg, Microsoft is considering a plan to buy global cloud computing company Salesforce. These same sources say that Microsoft and Salesforce are not technically in talks, but rather Microsoft is preparing to make a bid for the company should it come up for sale. Here to give us his perspective on this news is Steve Kovac, Senior Editor at Business Insider. Welcome, Steve. Hey, thanks for having me. So the piece in Business Insider says that if Microsoft or anyone else buys Salesforce, this would be the largest software company acquisition in history. Does Salesforce want to be acquired or are they fending off a takeover? It's really unclear what's happening. I mean, the Microsoft thing that came out today isn't that surprising. Like, of course, Microsoft is going to be considering making an offer if a competitor is making a bid. It's a protective move. I mean, I think the real story here is like who is making this bid or who is sniffing around Salesforce? Because, I mean, this is a massive acquisition. I think, you know, their market cap before this news broke was, you know, well over 40 billion. So this is not going to be a cheap acquisition for anyone. Um, so, you know, the big players like Oracle and uh, Google and Microsoft have been like thrown around, but uh, no one for sure. It's definitely not Microsoft. If Microsoft is just thinking about making an offer, it's not them. So what I really want to know in this is who's who's making any kind of serious um, approach uh, to Salesforce about uh, about buying the company. That's it's really a bizarre story now. It's it's kind of it's really strange. It got even stranger today. Right. I mean, because Oracle's kind of said, well, you know, it's didn't they sort of deny it and say that, you know, if someone else buys it, that'd be great for us. Yeah. I mean, they always say that. And Oracle and Salesforce, you know, they kind of play nice to, with each other. I guess it would be great for them. I don't know. I mean, you know, competitors say that kind of stuff all the time. So maybe it's not Oracle, but I mean, there are, I mean, think about the, the, there are very few number of companies out there who can actually afford to buy or merge with Salesforce. So um, it's not Microsoft, it's maybe not uh, Oracle. So who is it then? Right. So now who, what are they really interested in? Is the cloud part of the business or is it the CRM part or is that both the same thing? What's so I mean, interesting about them? Go ahead. Yeah, I guess it's kind of much the same thing. I mean, it's, it's just really bizarre. I mean, Salesforce is doing okay on its own and like its competitors are very much in line with them. So, I mean, I, I don't know what the acquisition brings exactly um, if you were going to merge or acquire Salesforce, but um, it, it's just crazy. I mean, it's, it's huge. It would be a mega, mega merger. It'd be under a ton of scrutiny, I, I imagine, especially if a similar company is trying to buy them. Um, and then if Microsoft try, you know, gets in, throws its hat in the ring, I guess it gets even crazier. Right. So Microsoft and Salesforce, they already have a deal. They're already working together a little bit, right, on just with their software, making it work together better. Yeah. And that's part of what Microsoft's, that's this overarching theme since Satya Nadella took over Microsoft, you know, work, you know, they're working with Box, they're working with Salesforce, even though they're technically competing on some, on various levels. So, um, but, you know, it doesn't, I guess today's news was a lot of hubbub over nothing because it's like, of course, Microsoft is going to start talking about maybe throwing in its hat in the ring uh, when a, a comp another competitor is talking about buying Salesforce. That's just a given. And I think it happened with SAP years and years ago. Right. It was a lot of hubbub, but also the the, the stock went up, right? I mean, Salesforce stock took a bump. I mean, went, went up and had to stop trading for a little while because of this rumor. So it was kind of a big deal, I guess. 
Yeah, it was a big deal. And that's just, I mean, that's also people seeing headlines and maybe a little bit of misinterpretation in the market thinking like, oh, Microsoft is the one trying to buy it. No, it's just, you know, they're thinking about it. I mean, the Bloomberg piece made it very clear that nothing is imminent, you know, between Microsoft and Salesforce. This is just like Microsoft is getting ready to go on the defensive if they have to. And um, so I think that headline flashed across the Bloomberg terminal and people started freaking out. And that's why the stock went up and that's why they halted it, too. So it's really a story about how powerful we journalists are, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so let's move on to Apple. I know you got your Apple Watch. You posted your yeah. review. Um, I would give your review three words, uh, four words. It's just a watch. Okay. That's basically what yeah. you... <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> right. You say, like, calm down, everybody. You know, it it does what it needs to do. Um, is, is that what, the way you describe your review so far? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of expectations have been lumped on this thing, you know, A, because it's Apple, B, because people are just, it's such a new category and people are still trying to figure out how, what works with it. And, you know, I found, you know, I've had it for a week and a half now and I found it works best when I don't use a lot of the features that it comes with. Uh, the apps are terrible, like especially the third party apps. The only good one I've used so far is Uber, which is super simple. You just tap a button and your car comes. But so many of the apps are trying to recreate the smartphone experience on this tinier screen. And it just doesn't work. There's no reason to have to squint at tweets and Instagram photos on this like little two inch screen. Do it on your phone. Um, I find it better when it's it's much more passive. It, it sends you a notification. We get a text or, you know, you want to check the time or the weather or something really easy like that. Um, I think people are trying to say, oh, this is going to replace your smartphone. No, it's not. It's a, it plays along with your smartphone. And it's, I made it very clear. It's not an essential gadget. You don't need to go out and buy it. Like we arguably need a smartphone to do a lot of things. You don't need the watch. It's an accessory. It's fun to have. It's cool. I like it. It looks cool. Um, but other than that, it's that, that's all that it is. You shouldn't lump more expectations on it than that. Right. The Instagram is interesting, too, because not only is it, you know, smaller, but it's slow. I mean, it's getting the information through Bluetooth, right, from your from your. Yeah, your I mean, that's all, that's all the apps. The apps technically live on your phone and they have to kind of load through Bluetooth. And plus, you know, if you're on a, a slow wireless connection or something, then that adds to it. But yeah, I mean, all the apps are very, very slow. You, I spent, I even wrote in my review, I spent so much time looking at that little loading screen, um, waiting for stuff to come through. It's like, by that time, I'm just ready to look at my phone. Right. Um, so, you know, right now, I don't think uh, developers uh, really get what this thing is supposed to do and like how they can like utilize it the best they could. Um, so we're just seeing like a lot of smartphone apps like shrunken down to this little, you know, one inch screen or one and a half inch screen or whatever, whatever it is. Right. So I'm more interested in this secret port that's currently not in use. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, it sounds like, I mean, yesterday they came out with the, uh, you know, the third party ban thing um, and they didn't mention that port, which is interesting to me, which makes me think that, okay, this is the kind of thing, you know, it's only for internal use. Um, I doubt that that one company, yeah, the one that you're showing right now, I doubt that one company is actually going to be able to build th this band that extends battery life, or at least if they do pull it off, it won't have any kind of official um, recognition from Apple. Right. Um, and so, yeah, it's probably something for diagnostics or like loading the initial OS onto the watch. Um, I really doubt um, it's going to be anything more than that. Um, and, and I try to find it. It looks like there's like this little pinhole in there. I took the band off. And it, there's like this little tiny pinhole and you kind of pop it out like you pop out a SIM card tray, it looks like. So, yeah, um, they're calling it a diagnostic port, I think. Yeah, and I think that's an accurate way to describe it. I don't think we should put any more, uh, you know, attention on it than that. You know, it's it's something just for Apple to noodle around with the system um, when they load it up. And I don't think it's going to be able to actually charge or anything like that or like for third parties to actually make use of. Yeah. I mean, that reserve strap, I mean, they, they say they could, they say that there is a charger in there and you can sign up and you can get one one day. And, um, but what you're yeah, saying it is that- It's 250 bucks too. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's just half the price of the Apple watch. So right. I don't, I don't, you want to spend that much money on it. Yeah. I mean, I think as far as charging, it's like, if you know what you can and can't do, you know, you get an idea of how much battery life you're going to have in it and yeah. just manage it. And actually battery life has been great for me. I, I was so worried going in because Apple is really vague about the battery life on this thing. I let's see, it's what, what time is it? It's uh 7 PM or past 7 PM my time. So I've been using it since five 30 this morning. 
and I'm at 62%. Mm, Um, so that's, you know, I go to bed most days and it's above 50%. Right. Yeah. Uh, That's more than enough. Right. Uh, yeah. Apple is, they've been so strict about developers creating everything. So, I mean, I don't think there's no reason then to think that this band or any band that's going to use this port is going to come out anytime soon. Exactly. Okay, let's move on to the new Apple remote that we heard about today. Sources at the New York Times say that this summer the new Apple TV will include a brand new remote. What are some of the features that we think we know about the new remote? Yeah, so far, um, Brian Chen from the Times, like all he really got was it's going to have a touchpad. So to me, that doesn't necessarily mean like a touch screen, like it's going to have like using the remote app on your iPhone. So it's going to be um, more kind of like a gesture type thing. Um, I think John Gruber of Daring Fireball, he kind of speculated maybe it's going to have like that force touch capability where you press a little harder and it fast forwards or you winds. Uh, that would be pretty cool. And I think it's overdue because the Apple TV remote as it stands now is actually far too simple. Um, it's really tough to navigate menus. Um, you know, it has the directional keypad and stuff. Um, you know, I lost my Apple TV remote uh weeks ago and I haven't used it since I use the, my iPhone now for my Apple TV remote. It works much better in a lot of ways, especially uh, input and search. Um, so I, I think it's going to be interesting to see how, um, what first of all, what it looks like. And second of all, like the control mechanisms for it, if they try to like recreate some way to uh, navigate the interface on the TV. Have you been able to use your Apple Watch as your remote yet? Yeah, I did that. Um, I don't like that. <laughs> I, I, I do not like using my watch as my remote. It just feels awkward and way too geeky for me. Um, you know, just like t- tapping on this like little tiny screen just to control my Apple TV. I mean, it's cool to try it once, but um, I'm, I'd rather have a regular remote or just use my iPhone. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I hate all remotes. I have 10 of them and they're all the old fashioned kind. And um, it seemed exciting to me, but I don't have Apple TV. So. Well, Steve, thank you so much for joining us. Steve Kovac is a senior editor at Business Insider. You can catch up with all of his work and commentary at at Steve Kovac on Twitter and, of course, at Business Insider. Are you working on anything new that you can tell us about yet? Uh, You guys ask me that every time, and I I wish I could tell you what I'm doing, and I can't yet. It's coming soon, I swear. I promise. One day I'm going to break you down. (laughs) It's going to be really cool. It's going to be so cool. I can't wait to share it with everyone. All right. Thank you so much, Steve. All right. Take care. Thank you. Coming up, Groove Shark rises from the dead, and Conan has a solution for your tattooed Apple Watch lifestyle. But first, this episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com. lynda.com is for anyone who loves to learn or wants to learn or needs to learn. It's a great way to get started developing an app, taking better photos, building a new website, or just improving your memory. lynda.com has everything you need to feed your curious mind. Do you want to learn a new programming language? Lynda.com has courses on PHP, C++, C Sharp, Python, Ruby, Java, and more. They also have an innovative series called Code Clinic, where they issue a series of code challenges and authors share their solutions using different programming languages. And they just released a course called Up and Running with your Apple Watch, which I plan to spend some quality time watching this very evening. My watch is not here yet, but I like to be prepared. If you want to take all of these courses, you can. A lynda.com membership gives you unlimited access to training on hundreds of topics, all for just one flat rate. You can stream thousands of video courses on demand, complete with transcripts, which allow you to follow along or search for an answer and skip right to that point in the video. Whether you're looking to become an expert, you're passionate about a hobby, or you just want to learn something new, visit lynda.com slash TN2 and sign up for your free 10-day trial. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash T. N2, and we thank them for their support. Now on to a few more stories we're following today. According to The Verge, the United States government no longer needs a warrant to search your phone location records. This is a reversal of a court decision from late last year. 11th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals in Atlanta held that the government did not violate privacy rights by using location tracking to convict a man in a 2010 armed robbery spree. What this means for the rest of us is that we now have no reasonable expectation of privacy when it comes to our phone location records. There's a story on Slashdot today about Alt School, a collaborative community of micro schools that's raised over $100 million from investors. Alt School is a San Francisco startup on a mission to disrupt school. 
which is funny because I get calls from the principal of my kids' school when they try to disrupt school and nobody is giving us $100 million. All schools aim is to give every child access to an exceptional, personalized education that enables them to be happy and successful in an ever-changing world. That's according to their marketing information. Investors include Mark Zuckerberg, John Doerr, and Laureen Powell Jobs, among others. Last week, we reported that music sharing site Groove Shark had shut down, but what's true with movie dinosaurs is also true with music piracy. Life finds a way. A reporter at BGR says that today he received an email from someone calling himself Shark and informing him that a merry band of pirates have brought the illegal music sharing site back to life. Apparently, Shark backed up all the music on his own server and cloned Groove Shark. Streamers, beware. Well-known Apple inventor Conan O'Brien has also come up with a solution for the problem of the Apple Watch's sensors not being able to recognize the heartbeats of people with wrist tattoos. Let's take a look at the video. There it is. It can actually read your heart rate and tell how you feel right through the hand so that whatever you're doing with that fake creepy hand will be recorded on your Apple Watch. Now, if we could combine this with the selfie stick hand I showed you last week, then we would really have something. Thank you, Conan O'Brien. I asked you, our viewers to tag or send in your selfies watching or listening to Tech News Tonight. We recently received some more images, so I thought I would share this one with you all. Today's TNT Selfie Fan of the Day is Ron Carlson from Erie, Pennsylvania, who sent us this selfie watching Tech News Tonight on a refurbished iPad Air he is trying to sell. I sure hope my likeness will help you sell more product and the Twit lawyers will be contacting you shortly. <laughs> Just kidding. No, really, they will. So send us your selfies. Tag your pictures with TN2 Selfie on Twitter, Google+, Instagram, or via email to TN2 at twit.tv. Tell us a little bit about yourself. We might choose to show your selfie on the show. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write to us at TN2 at twit.tv and watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I am Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.